Have you ever cloned a repo and then the repo got moved or you decided you want to fork a repo, but your local Git doesn't connect to it on GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab? Don't worry, it's happened to all of us. And what a lot of you probably do is delete the local copy and reclone it. There's actually a much easier way than that. And we've all been there. We've all tried to beat around the bush and try to figure something out. And it's a really simple, straightforward way to do this. And I want to show you it really quickly and easily. And in fact, there's a second way you can do this that Nick in our community showed us, which is even easier. So we're going to give that a go too. So all on the command line. Hi. My name is Eddie and my channel is about open source and getting you into open source so you can get the job and money that you deserve. If that sounds interesting, don't forget to subscribe below and if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. As you can see behind me, we've got this awesome Discord community repo and it's not mine, it's someone else's and I'm going to clone it and I want to show you how when I fork it, I can actually update my local copy. And I actually probably want to keep both because I want to have the origin and I want to have upstream. That way I can pull down the latest changes from the original repo. Let me show you. Now I've cloned this repo. If I go into it and do a git remote minus V, you'll see that this is pointing to someone else's repo. And so if I want to push, I can't push to this repo because I don't have access. Now I click fork and create a fork. And you can see now I have a fork of the repo. And I want to push to a branch in my fork version. What I normally would do is I'd remove the remote, the remote origin, and I would re-add it with my repo. Let me show you how to do that and then we'll try it Nick's way, which is a lot cleaner. Now we have no remotes and then we will add a remote. And we'll just go to my forked version, copy the git link and paste it. And so now when I go git remote minus V, you will see it's now connected to my repo. So I can pull and push to my repo and my repo is a forked version. But what happens if I want to pull or I want to fetch from the original repo? I need to add another remote that is labeled upstream. So therefore when I run my git commands, I can mention origin, which is my fork, or I can mention upstream, which is the original repo. And now you can see we have two remotes. We have origin, my fork, and upstream, which is the original repo. Now let me delete both of those and let me put it back to what it was. And I'm gonna show you Nick's way of doing this. Now you can see this is back to when I originally cloned the original repo before I forked. Nick's way of doing this is using the set command. So we've got a remote origin, which is the original repo, and let's update it. And that has now updated from the original repo to my forked version. So Nick, that worked really well. Thank you very much for the suggestion. It's definitely less steps. Remember, you don't have to delete your local Git repo. You can update the remote, either add remotes, remove them or update them to make your life easier. Therefore, you don't lose any stashes, any branches that you have locally that haven't been pushed up yet. I hope that helps. Let me know which version and which way you prefer to manage your remotes in the comments below. We also have a Discord. The link is below in the description. Come and join us so we can chat between live streams and videos. Don't forget to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video go live. It is completely free. I'll see you soon.